Sergas, chapter 157. Know that on the right hand of the Indies, there is an island called California, very near to the terrestrial paradise, which was peopled with black women, without any men among them, because they were accustomed to live after the fashion of Amazons. They were of strong and hardened bodies, of ardent courage, and of great force. The island was the strongest in the world from its deep rocks and great cliffs. Their arms were all of gold, one of comparisons to the wild beasts to which they rode after having tamed them. For in all the island there is no other metal. They lived in caves very well worked out. They had many ships in which they sailed to other parts to carry on their forays. That was an excerpt from His Level Best by Edward E. Hale, published in 1885. The book His Level Best is purported to reveal the origin of the name California. Said Hale of the origins of California, it follows almost certainly that Cortez and his followers in 1535 must have been acquainted with the romance, the adventures of Esplandian, and as they sailed up the west side of Mexico, they supposed they were precisely at the place indicated in the right hand of the Indies. It will be remembered also that by sailing in the same direction, Columbus, in his letter to the sovereign, says he shall be sailing towards the terrestrial paradise. So, all right, folks, you're probably wondering, what was that about? Well, that, or this video, <laughs> is about Queen Calafia, the Queen of California. You see, a while ago, I came across this little ditty about California, as in the United States state of California. California, yay! See, California is actually named after a mythical African queen named Calafia from the Arabic Caliph, translated into Spanish as Khalifa, hence Calafia. Calafia, more or less, California means something along the lines of queen, oh, Calafia's island or ruler's island, if you want to do a literal translation. So it's not really in dispute anymore that the state of California got its actual name from a mythical African island of Amazonian women. <laughs> but it's not something that many people know. Over the last few weeks, I've been thinking about black queens and black royalty, partly because if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I have been dealing with fallout from the fact that I made two videos now showing that Queen Charlotte, the 18th century British queen consort, was not in any way, shape, or form a black woman for the various evidence that I've laid out. Some people just cannot accept that for whatever reason. There's also the fact of Jodie Turner-Smith, an actress I do like who was cast as Anne Boleyn, the queen consort and second wife of Henry VIII, the 16th century Tudor king. Um, this is very problematic, you know. I've been criticized for what many people, for what I call token diversity. And many people seem okay with that. I personally am not okay with that because I do believe there are options for black and other non-white racialized groups that you don't have to keep copying or inserting yourself into European things. Not to say The Adventures of Esplandian is not a European thing. It was written by a Spanish man in 1510. But nonetheless, it the most important and interesting aspect of The Adventures of Esplandian is that it had the story of Queen Calafia, whose story came into existence in 1510 and who predates Wonder Woman. Despite this, instead of getting Queen Calafia, we have uh, Nubia, who is the Black Wonder Woman. Nothing against Nubia, but uh, this is an offshoot character who is completely unnecessary, which is the point, ultimately, that I'm making. Why have a secondary um, offshoot of a white character when you can have an original Black Amazonian queen on your own? And this one has an entire island, gave its name to an entire state, the state of California. It's interesting because the state of California also had the option to make Queen Calafia their patron, quote unquote, goddess, but chose instead to do, 
to go a different path. So, Khalafia, sometimes spelled Khalifia, Khalifia, from the Arabic Khalifa, I'll get into that. So, the typical write-up is Khalafia or Khalifia is the fictional queen of the island of California, first introduced by 16th century poet Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo in his epic novel of chivalry, Las Sergas de la Esplandian, terrible Spanish. The Adventures of Esplandian, written around 1510, the Californias, a region of North America encompassing the U.S. state of California and the Mexican states of Baja California and Baja California Sur, take their name from Calafia and her kingdom. Typically, in the novel, which I will link to below, Calafia is a pagan warrior queen who ruled over a kingdom of black women living on the island of California. Calafia is convinced to raise an army of women warriors and sail away from California with a large, with a large flock of trained griffins uh, to join a Muslim battle against Christians who were defending Constantinople. In the siege, the griffins harm enemy and friendly folks alike because they cannot tell the difference, the Christians and the Muslims, because both sides are men and the griffins have only been trained to kill men. <laughs> it only has been trained to, to to differentiate between men and women, but not men and men. So Calafia and her ally, Radiaro, fight in a single combat against Christian leaders. A king and his son, the knight Esplandian, Calafia is bested and taken prisoner, and she converts to Christianity. She marries a cousin of Esplandian. I think his name is Talanke. You can read it in what I will be publishing, and returns with her army to California to further adventures. So, regarding the name Calafia, likely formed from the Arabic word Khalifa, a religious state leader, that is known as Caliph in English and Calaf Khalifa in Spanish. Similarly, the name Calafia's realm, California, likely originated from the same root, fabricated by the author to remind a 16th century Spanish reader of Reconquista, a centuries-long fight between Christians and Muslims, blah, blah, blah. Calafia has been depicted as the spirit of California and has been the subject of modern-day sculpture, painting, stories, and films. She often figures in the myth of California's origin, symbolizing an untamed and bountiful land prior to European settlement. So we don't have to actually get into the story here. You can read about it later, but... What I really want to get into is the the etymology, because I know there will be people who are like, but it wasn't named. How do you know that for a fact? Okay, folks, so we're getting into the etymology of the name California. California, uh, terrible. So the first voyage of Christopher Columbus in the late 15th century sparked a new interest in the search for the terrestrial paradise. If you read uh, Hales's um, interpret or translation of the Queen of California story, then you'll know that it was described as a terrestrial paradise, a legendary land of ease and riches with beautiful women wearing golden pearls. Spanish author Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo drew upon reports from the New World to add interest in his fantasy world of chivalry and battle of riches, victory, and loss of an upside-down depiction of traditional sex roles. So around the year 1500 in his novel, The Adventures of Esplandian, he writes, Know ye that at the right hand of the Indies, there is an island called California, very close to the part of the terrestrial paradise, which was inhabited by black women without a single man among them, and they lived in the manner of Amazons. They were robust of body with strong, passionate hearts and great virtue. The island itself is one of the wildest in the world, on account of the bold and craggy rocks. The explorer Hernan Cortes and his men were familiar with the book. Cortes quoted it in 1524. It was initially originally believed to have been published in 1510 and was later rediscovered in 1519. It was also the subject of the Spanish Inquisition. Um, but furthermore, going on, I'm going to just jump down a little bit because this is where it gets interesting. The name of California. So back to Edward Everett Hale. For many years, 
the Rodriguez de Montalvo novel Languish in Obscurity with no connection known between it and the name of California made by English-speaking Americans. In 1864, a portion of the original was translated by Edward Everett Hale, who, and I kid you not, describe it as the only thing worthy of the adventures of Esplandian, which is a bulky, overbloated uh, saga that um, has nothing going for it except for this particular curiosity the story of the Queen of California. So Edward Everett Hale, who he's the, the author I quoted from at the beginning of the video, he did a translation for the Antiquarian Society, and the story was printed in the Atlantic Monthly Magazine. So this is how the English-speaking world became aware of the Queen of California and the origin of the name. Hale supposed that in inventing the names, Rodriguez de Montalvo um, held in his mind the Spanish word caliph, the term used for leaders of Muslim people, which makes sense because the Muslims ruled over Spain um, for hundreds of years, 700 years. Hale's joint derivation of Calafia and California was accepted by many, then questioned by a few scholars who sought further proof and offered their own interpretations. George Davidson wrote in 1910 that Hale's theory was the best yet presented, but offers his own addition, an addition, not a replacement. In, in 1917, Ruth Putnam printed an exhaustive account of the work performed up to that time. She wrote that both Calafia and California most likely came from the Arabic word Khalifa, again, Khalif, uh, which means ruler or leader. The same word in Spanish was Khalifa. Easily made into California, to stand for a land, land of the caliph, or Calafia to stand for a female caliph, the name of the queen. Putnam, discussion, Putnam discussed Davidson's 1910 theory based on the Greek word Kali, meaning beautiful, but discounted is it, it as exceedingly unlikely, most likely, a conclusion that Dora Beale Polk agreed with in 1995, calling the theory far-fetched. You know, let's go with the easiest theory here, people. Is that Occam's razor? The easiest theory, Spanish speakers, popular Spanish book where the name was published, <laughs> you know, just a couple decades earlier. Putnam also wrote that the Song of Roland held a passing mention of a place called California. And here is where it gets crazy to quote Ben um, off stuff they don't want you to know. California, perhaps named thus because it was the Caliph's domain, a place of infidel rebellion. Chapman elaborated on this connection in 1921. There can be no question that, no question but that a learned man like Ordonis de Montalvo was familiar with Chanson de Roland. The derivation of the word California can perhaps never be proved, but it is too plausible and it may be added uh, too interesting to be overlooked. Paul characterizes theory as imaginative speculation, adding that another scholar offered the interesting, plausible suggestion that Rowland's Califarn is a corruption of the Persian Califarm, a, myth a mythological mountain of paradise where griffins lived. So basically, so in, in this, it's a corruption of a Persian term, Califarn, a mythological mountain paradise. So these are technically two maybe competing theories, Carifarn and the corruption of it, Califern, for Roland's uh, song of Roland, um, and also Caliph, meaning ruler. So, mm, interesting, but it makes a lot of sense, and we're going to um, take a look at it a little further. So, in 1923, Prosper Bassanar, I will not be trying to pronounce these in any other way besides <laughs> English, Dean of Literature at the University of Poitiers, sorry, wrote that fortified capital city in 11th century Algeria was built and defended by the Beni Ifern tribe of Berber people. This city was called Cala Iferne or Califerne, which I'm guessing, I don't know, Cala Ifern by the Arabs and was certainly known at the time in Spain. So again, we're going back today. It is the ruins known as Beni Hamad Fort. Bosanat said the Arab name of this fortress city likely inspired Roland and later Rodriguez de Montalvo, which makes a lot of sense, such that Califern became the Califern and then California. Hmm. John William Templeton describes how Hernan Cortez 
Cortez's expedition in search of California had Africans as a third of his crew, including his second in command, Juan Garrido. Juan Garrido. Juan Garrido was an African conquistador born in the kingdom of Congo. Interesting. Templeton says that Califia is exemplary of a genre of literature from the 14th to 16th centuries that featured black women as powerful, wealthy, and beautiful. Historian Jack Forbes wrote that the Spanish were quite experienced in being ruled by Africans given the Moorish occupation from 1710 to 1490. So we've met two competing but not distant um, um, theories about the name of California, Caliph from the Arabic Caliph meaning ruler, and so California would be ruler's land. Calafia is easily a translation of feminization of Caliph, the Spanish feminization of Caliph, so that's kind of explan explanatory. And then Califern, which itself comes from the Song of Roland, which I will show you how similar these two are in a second, but Carifarn, which is the Persian, uh, um, the argument that Califerns, Roland's Califern. So if you're, the hierarchy here is Multalvo got California from Roland's Califern, which itself is a corruption of the Persian Carifarn, or a mythological mountain of paradise where griffins lived. So technically, if it's a corruption of a Persian term, is it still the same root as the Arabic Caliph, meaning ruler? Interesting. Multiple theories, as you see there. So, <laughs> again, the typical, the generally most accepted explanation is that most historians believe the name likely originated from the 16th century novel La Sergas de Esplandian, The Adventures of Esplandian, the novel popular at the time of the Spanish exploration of Mexico and the Baja California Peninsula, describes a fictional island named California, ruled by Queen Calafia, east of the Indies, exact spelling. The author of the novel, Garcia Rodriguez de Montalvo, also known as Ortodonis de Montalvo, is thought to have derived the term California from the Arabic Caliph and or Khalifa, but this might have also been influenced by the term Califern in the 11th century epic French poem The Song of Roland. When Spanish explorers in the 16th century first encounter the Baja California Peninsula, west of the Sea of Cortez, they believe the peninsula to be an island similar to the island described in Montalvo's novel. They named the land California. Initially, California applied only to Baja California, blah, blah, blah. So let's just kind of jump a little bit <laughs> because this is getting out of hand. Today, the name California is shared by many places, blah, blah, blah. The Sergas de Esplandian theory. So we kind of already went after that. For many years, the Montalvo's narrows language in obscurity, blah, 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 until it was rediscovered. And then the translation by Edward Everett Hale, which I read at the beginning of the video, then published in the Atlantic, and then it became the stuff of history. So here is it, the Song of Roland held a passing mention of a place called Califern, perhaps named thus because it was the Caliph's domain, a place of infinite rebellion. Chapman elaborated this in connection in 1921 about the fact that Montalvo was a learned man and so was most likely familiar with the Song of Roland, which makes a lot of sense. This derivation of the word California can perhaps never be proved, but it's plausible. And of course, there's the Persian Carifirm, a mythical mountain of paradise where griffins live. That's important part because in the land of California, there are griffins that are native, which again is very similar so it it does feel as if in fact um the song of roland uh was the inspiration for montalvo because montalvo prior was not known for writing um stories that were his own creation he was just known for basically copying other people's stories and this was supposedly his first original story so the Song of Roland is an 11th century old French epic poem that describes the August 15, 17, 7, 778 defeat and retreat of Charlemagne's army by the Basque, blah, blah, blah. So the original French verse, CCXY, lines which, um, no, I won't read it in the French, I'll just read the English translation. Dead is my nephew who conquered so much for me, against me, 
all against me will rebel the Saxons, Hungarians, Bulgars, and many hostile men, Romans, Apulians, and all those of Palmero, and those of Africa, and those of Califern. So Africa and Califern. Here, Califern might be referring to, again, um, Arabs, <laughs> which most likely the translation is, in fact, land of the Arabs or land of the caliph. The caliph is a Muslim ruler, a Muslim who rules over Muslims. And so Cali Califern, the land of the Muslim ruler, likely makes a lot of sense. So he's most likely saying Arabs. And by this point, remember, this was published in, this was referring to an incident that took place in 778. By this point, the Muslims had already taken over much of the, the Arabian, the Iberian, Pen peninsula. So Spain and Portugal was only recently and freshly under control uh, of, um, of the Muslims here, the Moors more specifically. So they started occupying those lands in 710. By this point, they would have been in control for like 60 years. So this, this, um, the author here would have been very much familiar or aware of the fact that Spain and Portugal would have been under Muslim control. So here, Califern is most likely referring to Caliph's land, or the land of Caliphs, the land of the Caliphs, basically the Arab lands, and those of Africa and those of Califern, those of the land of the Arabs. The word Californ from the Song of Roland may have served as inspiration to Montalvo for the name California, since both works contain a similar plot point, a battle between Christians and non-Christian armies. The author of the Song of Roland, who is believed to be Norman, the Norman poet Teraldus, is thought to have derived Califern from Caliph. More than anything, I don't think Queen Calafia gives the island its name. I think the island's name was already there, and cleverly, Montalvo simply gave the queen the name Khalifa to match the island. So in a way, even though the, the, the name means Caliph's land, land of the Caliphs or land of the, the Muslims, basically, and the Montalvo basically named Calafia queen, uh, Calafia Calafia <laughs> to match it. So it can be interpreted as Calafia's land, but land of the Caliphs. Very clever, very, very clever. But here you have it, the origin of um, the name California, Mueller of Queen Calafia and the Amazons at Mark Hopkins Hotel in San Francisco. This is the long-standing mural, but as you can see, California was given a choice if they wanted to make Calafia their patron, quote-unquote, goddess, and they chose instead to go in a different direction. The more people learn of Queen Calafia, the more people realize that, hey, this is an amazing story. And the fact that this is the only story that was worth saving, at least according to Everett Hale, Edward Everett Hale, from The Adventures of Explendian, which he describes, quote unquote, as a useless romance. <laughs> but here you have it, folks, the story of Queen Calafia and California. If you want to read the full translated excerpt, I will be linking it below along with a surprise. A surprise will be <clears throat> a sequel. But I will be linking the story where you can get a copy of it as well as a surprise in that copy. That is it, folks. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.